Hello, I'm Adriana. I'm a Master Soul Path teacher and guide. We're going to do an intuitive reading today. This is designed to give you more clarity and more context and perhaps a different spiritual perspective for what's going on in your situation right now. I work specifically with people who are ready and willing to do the work to self-improve, who can look within, ask themselves questions, and make changes. So if this is you, there's going to be something in this reading for you. Okay, let's see where we are. As with all of my readings, I do ask that you... Use your own discretion, take responsibility for the way you interpret and use this information. Um, sometimes our filters or what we want to hear gets in the way of the message, so it's up to you to be cognizant of how you're taking this in and how you're interpreting it. Okay. Justice crossed with the lovers. Interesting. Okay, five of pentacles on the bottom, nine of swords on the top. Here, judgment, ten of swords, two of wands. Okay, nice. I'm going to save the outcome for later because that's a nice surprise. Okay, so justice and the lovers, this being the situation and the challenge, we are looking at a relationship and we're looking at your relationship to the relationship. Justice looks at the balance of both sides, self and other. And there's a question of, at the heart of this um, situation is, it's like objectivity versus subjectivity, heart versus head. What are the facts and the logic versus the emotional entanglements that might be clouding your judgment, that might be causing you to perceive something the way it's really not? It's like you can't really argue with the facts, but your mind can spin all sorts of stories about justifications and where it should go. And you're struggling with the lovers, what choice do I make? What does this mean? How do I move forward? And also there's a question of how do I balance what I want with what the other person wants? I feel like with the lover's card, it's like you're asking for more help. You're perhaps asking for help from your guides, your angels, the more divine source. But I have to say, given what the other cards are, I don't know that you're truly trusting that they're going to help you as much as what you're asking for. Okay, it's like you're, what you're asking for is such a big ask that you don't know if there's anything that can help you to make this situation better or to resolve this situation. It's, so the choice, although it looks on the earth like it's about yourself and the other, it's actually between you and your other, I'll say otherworldly guidance, again, guides, angels, the ones who are there to really help give us positive energy to move forward on our paths. And you're asking for that almost divine intervention, but at the same time, you're feeling like it's not going to come. Nine of Swords is how you're currently dealing with this situation, which is a lot of anxiety about the future, a lot of worry, dread, of what's to come. And I see that you're getting lost in your mind a lot about this. All three of these cards that I've just talked about all have to do with this suit of air, which is your thoughts, your beliefs, your mental activity. And Nine of Swords is not constructive mental activity. It is actually destructive mental activity that really keeps you stuck in a lower vibration, worry, anxiety, dread, that is all going to keep you farther and farther away from that divine guidance. Divine guidance is the highest vibration possible. It comes from unconditional love. It comes from positivity. It comes from understanding that we need to be nurtured in order to grow. And 
the reason why we meditate, the reason why we work on ourselves is to get closer to that higher vibration where we enter a state of unconditional love and flow and our life just unfolding. It doesn't mean that there won't be obstacles or that there won't be hardships because we're here to get stronger and that's what those lessons teach us. But the more we keep ourselves removed from that divine guidance, first of all, you're not going to hear it. Second of all, we're going to misinterpret it. And third of all, you're going to feel like you're alone. And that's the biggest mistake in perception to make because the truth about reality is everything is in interconnected. We're part of it. We're all part of a bigger source. We may look differentiated. We may look like different people down here, but our essence, that which is a divine spark trying to evolve and grow, that's true in all of us. Not everyone wants to align with that divine essence. Not everyone is aware of that divine essence, but it's still there. And when you say that you're alone and you're disconnected, then you don't believe your guides are there. You don't believe your ancestors are there. You don't believe that the unconditional love of the universe is there. And that's when we get stuck in fear. And that's when we start to go into survival mode and I'm going to take and feed myself no matter what. We get locked in the ego. So you're really doing yourself a disservice by coming to this place of dread and worry. And in the subconscious is the five of pentacles. So again, we're afraid of loss. We're afraid of hardship. And the, five, the message of the five of pentacles is about learning to come to grips with what spiritual abundance really is. It, tends to not be so much about the material or what's there. It's saying that actually what's on the inside is what's the most important. So in a way, the external choices don't matter so much. They're almost arbitrary. But what's on the inside, what is at the heart of this situation that you find yourself in, that's what needs to be resolved. Okay, so you're all worried about the choice. That's the lovers here. But there's a deeper issue at the core with this five of pentacles. And before I get into the past and future about this, I want to clarify what the deeper core issue is. Okay. Queen of Wands. So this is about believing in your power, believing in your sovereignty believing, having the confidence to believe in yourself, really, to believe in your full power. And when you believe in yourself and you are connected to that full power and the passion of what's in your heart, there is, you don't doubt the help from the universe. You don't doubt the help from the forces that you can't see. But there's a loss of confidence here. There's, I don't know if it's self-esteem or self-worth also going on, but there's definitely a loss of self-confidence. And it is the loss of self-confidence that is at the heart of the issue. It's not the choice you're trying to make or not make. It's the lack of self-confidence. All right, so in the past, what triggered the situation, we have the devil, and this is one or more people stuck in an illusion or stuck in a pattern that has to do with that ego entrapment. Uh, this can be anything from addiction to people pleasing to codependence to escapism. And so that is what has ticked off. That's where you are right now. So it's coming from, it's actually coming from the illusion. It's not coming from a place of truth. And what's going on here? Can you show me the connection between this? Okay. So this, in this experience where you came to, to face this darkness, or you face this this kind of, I don't want to say demon because that sounds a little bit uh, superstitious, but you face this dark energy, whether it was in yourself or someone else, but it has shaken your self-confidence. It has shaken your sense of self. 
And so there's a little bit of healing that needs to take place with that. And I do see that happening in the future for you, the Four of Pentacles. I do see you taking that healing step and encountering more stability in the future. So it's like you regain that confidence. You're not done. You still have more... Um, that's the foundation for your next step. It's not like a 10 of pentacles or a 10 of cups where we're finally culminated. It's a success along the way. And it's really a spiritual reconnecting with that sense of self, that sense of confidence. When you're feeling confident, not only do you have the vitality of your heart and your passion, but it's a lot easier for you to be open. It's a lot easier for you to receive and to to want to bring in not only new information, but intuitive information, because then you're not in a space of doubt. The thing with intuitive information is when you're already a little bit shaky, sometimes what comes through can be, can seem even shakier. When the, when the container is already confident and calm, then it's easier to interpret what's going in. But if you're in a little bit of fear or anxiety or you're just not sure and then you get intuitive information, it tends to create more insecurity. Because although the intuitive information was for your own good and for your benefit, it's like the container was cracked and some of the water leaks out, some of the information leaks out, or the container's not stable enough to hold everything that's being poured into it. I hope that's making sense. The judgment is your advice from your higher self. So your higher self does want you to rise above this situation, see the bigger picture, understand that what you're struggling with is actually a bigger part of a spiritual awakening. And that's another reason why the Nine of Swords is so here. Because when the ego perceives that you're about to bump up a level in higher vibration, it starts to grab on stronger. So you're about to become empowered. The ego says, uh-uh, if you do that, I'm not going to have a role. I, need, I thrive when you're living in fear. I feed off your fear. So of course it feels more insecure and wants to disempower you. So in a way, <laughs> the Nine of Swords is actually a good sign because it shows that the ego is, is threatened. And if the ego were not threatened, then it means you wouldn't be doing the work. So as long as you understand that's what it is and you don't listen to that Nine of Swords, ego, anxiety, fear-based energy, you're fine. Ten of Swords is in our um, external energy. And this is the energy of endings, of a very tough ending that, again, the ego is clinging to. Perhaps you're feeling like you're going to lose face with someone else or that they're going to change their opinion of you. I think that's some of the struggling that's happening here between the lovers and the justice. And it's, there's a, again, a fear associated with this, but I also am getting the sense that there will be a rebirth associated with that 10 of swords, that although one phase may be coming to an end and it may be difficult, maybe a hard phase to get through, there is the energy of a rebirth and that is truly what you want, two of wands. You'd like to come together in a place of strength where there's it's a stronger partnership that's actually looking to the future together in a truly shared vision. That is truly your desired outcome with this whole situation. You want to be individual but on the same page as the other. And highest potential for this. So this is assuming that you resolve the self-confidence that's going on in here, learn to disengage from the Nine of Swords, rise above where you are. We have this wonderful Three of Cups, which is celebration. Coming together, it's joyful, it's everything happening in its, its right time. It's creative energy, so you have this possibility of creating a really bright, abundant, vibrant future. And it's um, it's a really nice omen, especially given all of this hard energy that we're seeing, the nine, the 10, 
the five, the devil, all of this stuff. So on the other side is joy, harmony, reconciliation, coming back together. And um, there's also kind of a transient energy with the three of cups. And that means that, you know, moments of bliss and joy don't last forever. And so in one way, you're making a bigger deal out of this whole situation than it actually is. You're making it more than it is. It's causing you more stress and anxiety than what it's worth. Because the Three of Cups is saying, this is going to actually resolve pretty fast, and then we're going to just keep moving. We're going to move on. We also saw that hinted at in the Four of Pentacles. So, you know, don't make a mountain out of a mole, mole hill. Don't, um, as one of my friends likes to say, don't get caught up in your underwear about this. It's not that big of a deal. It's worse in your head. It's worse in your mind and your, your experience than it is actually going to be in person. Okay, so short steps. Healing to get your confidence back. Recognizing that this is part of a spiritual awakening. Anticipating a stronger hanging on from the ego. And understanding that as long as you work through all of this, it is going to turn out okay. It is going to turn out well. All right. Okay. Thank you so much for joining me for this reading. It really does make my heart happy to share these gifts with you. And if I can be of further service, again, like I said, I work with those who are really interested in self-improvement from the inside out, changing the inner world so that you can flourish in outside abundance. Please get in touch through my website or my email. Both are in the description below. It's soulguidancewithadriana.com couple different kinds of offerings on there. Some if you're just wanting like a little check-in for now and others if you're wanting more extended help. So I'll look forward to seeing you soon and have a good one.